Hey guys, this is Sam. Apologies for the delay, I'm not dead, as you can see. I've just been really focusing on getting Unfamiliar Skies Issue 2 finished, which, good news, it's gone to the printers, and it will be releasing on the 14th of October at Nottingham Comic Con. If you'd like to pre-order it, then pre-orders are open on my Big Cartel store right now, and if you're a Kickstarter backer, then your reward surveys should have already gone out to you, so please fill those in to get your copy as soon as the first print run comes in. Now, let's have a chat about a Monday Musing, because, Christ, that's been a while. Uh, essentially, I wanted to talk to you today about a different form of crowdfunding, which is Patreon. Now, Patreon has been around for a couple of years, really taken off in the last year or so, and uh, always been alien to me. I've never really understood Patreon. I've never really gotten the point, so to speak. And I've looked around a few, I decided to essentially give myself a small budget and sign up to a few of them just to try and gauge what Patreon's about and then see what I learned from my experiences. So I split it between two comics ones and two YouTube gamer ones. Um, just, you know, both of my interests, both of the things I tend to follow. And what I quickly realized was there were a few things I was looking for. So, once I had the limited budget, I was admittedly looking for things that had $1 pledge levels or £1 pledge levels, because what I aim to do, and, like, I don't like ever playing favourites, if that makes sense. So, I wanted to support as many people as possible um, with the budget, rather than spend all of the budget on one person. Uh, so, anyone who did not have a... One dollar, one pound level it was immediately out of the running. Um, also, people who... <coughs> and admittedly, the ones I picked, you know, with the exception of one of them, uh, the people I've picked, I've met personally, um, you know, I talk to semi-regularly, uh, you know, I know them beyond their work, if that makes sense. Um, so you could say I picked friends, which, you know, it wouldn't be an entirely unfair criticism, let's put it that way, but to not waffle, um, you know, I picked uh, Dan Butcher, the creator of the webcomic Vanguard, uh, Sarah Millman, who created the webcomic Heart of Time and is currently putting out the print comic uh, NPCT. Those were the two comics ones. And the two video game YouTuber ones uh, were the Gaming Brit, aka Charlie Cade, and Hyperbit Hero. So, what was I looking for? Um, number one, people who update semi regularly. So, a minimum once per month, which all of these guys hit. Uh, Dan, in particular, is a machine. His webcomic, you know, you've got a new, at least one new page every week, sometimes two new pages every week, and he does that alongside a day job, having a family. The man is a machine, and the quality never suffers. Um, it's always, you know, right up there. The only time that there aren't weekly updates is in between issues, so if he finishes you know, issue 13, when that was finished, there was about a month or so's break, I believe it was, before issue 14 kicked off. And you know what? That's fair enough. Dude, take a break. That's absolutely fine. Um, Sarah Millman, on the other hand, um, she is now doing comics full time. You know, no day job or anything like that, just comics. And she is, you know, looking at one new print issue every six weeks, um, which is... I mean, on the indie circuit, you're usually expecting someone to have one new issue per year, and it's impressive, typically, if they go beyond that. Uh, so one new one every six weeks is, um, yeah, it's quite the pace, and so far she's keeping it, um, despite hitting a, a couple of setbacks and a couple of health issues, she's still on it. Um, it's just... I'll never be able to keep up with these guys. I'm just going to put that out there now. Never going to be able to keep the pace that they do. I just don't don't have it in me, I don't think. But uh, you've then got uh, Hyperbit Hero and Charlie Cade, Gaming Brit. Uh, they put out YouTube gaming videos, but they're quite in-depth. They're quite well thought out. Um, you know, Gaming Brit in particular always feels more like, uh, almost like an essay 
um, you know, he'll pick a topic and talk about that topic and he'll come at games from new angles that haven't been explored before. And both of them always have these fantastic, usually long form videos that are really enjoyable. Um, and you might only get, you know, one, maybe two per month, but you can really see where that time and effort has gone. You know, the output, that is a month's work at least, you know. Uh, so I don't mind that so much. Um, one of the things that all of these Patreon accounts do is that they all have exclusive stuff that only backers get to see. So for Dan, it's a sketch a day. Um, for Millman, it's, you know, getting to see pages from the new issue, issue three, uh, digitally before issue three actually comes out. Uh, having access to digital copies of their back catalogs is something both Dan and Sarah seem to do. Um... You know, even just stuff like blogs and stuff, it all helps. And likewise, uh, if you look at, you know, Hyperbit Hero and Gaming Brit, it is things like, you know, behind the scenes, what videos they're working on, voting for what video you want to see next. I think it... Patreon seems to revolve around a club mentality, a herd mentality. You are part of this special group, this special community, um, you know, you might even get a, a different color name on a Discord server so that, you know, where everyone's chatting, they can see that you are one of the ones putting money in, so to speak. Um, and I kind of like that aspect of it. Now, because it is quite social, what's odd is a lot of the, the social side of it happens away from Patreon. Uh, like, usually it's come join our Discord server, things like that, or here's a video that's hosted privately on YouTube so other people can't see it, but you've got the URL, so here you go, you can see it. Um, it's that kind of thing, and it's really weird. Patreon seems to act as the gateway rather than a, the place that the community comes together. It's more like the, um, it's almost like Patreon is a bouncer. That's the best way I can think to put it. And then the exclusive content, you know, the the blogs, the videos, everything else is um, usually hosted externally, is what I've found so far. Now, I mean, Patreon is... I'm not logging into the site a lot. I don't feel like I'm using Patreon probably in the way it's intended or as much as I probably should. Um, however, the experiences I'm having on Patreon so far are very good experiences. I like them, you know. Um, I know some Patreons do things like uh, Patreon-only Q&As, where they'll live stream and they'll just answer questions to the camera from chat, and the only way to get in chat is to be a Patreon backer. Um, you know, it's... And because most of them are, like, $1 pledge levels, I don't really notice it going out of the bank account each month. I don't... I've not missed it if that makes sense. So even if I had a month where maybe I didn't use any of the exclusive stuff, I wouldn't necessarily feel like I'd lost anything. You know, it's very much the mentality of, well, I spend three pound on, you know, a sandwich at Subway without even thinking about it. It's just, yeah, yeah, three quid, there you go, fine, I'm hungry. Um, so, you know, up to a fiver in, in McDonald's and places, just like, yeah, fine, give me food. And that's just lunch. You know, so a quid or two a month on a Patreon is, uh, this is going to sound really arrogant, but it's, it's nothing. You know, I would actually be quite open to backing some more Patreons. Um, I'm actually having a look at the moment to see which other ones interest me. The one thing I do think about, um, which is kind of weird, is that if I were to ever do a Patreon, be it for, you know, my comics or, because um, I... In terms of hobbies, I sort of tend to lead two hobby lives. I've got my comics over here, um, and you know, like this YouTube channel that goes alongside them and all the rest of it. And I've got uh, video gaming over here, and likewise I have a gaming YouTube channel on that. And those two hobbies don't really mesh. It's really weird. I always thought there would be a crossover between uh, comics and video game crowd. And it, it's sort of there, but not really. And... If I had a Patreon, would it be for the comics or would it be for the gaming stuff I do? And actually, could you have a combined one and would 
both groups benefit equally from that? I'm guessing probably no. It's... Really weird, I don't know the answer to that. It's probably part of a bigger topic for a different Monday Musing. Um, however, it is something that, you know, potentially I might try to do in future. And what I do think about and I do worry about is if I'm backing another comic creator's Patreon and they're backing my Patreon... Are we not just passing the same dollar back and forth? And I get this issue a lot with Kickstarter because I see a Kickstarter come out and this is... I'm not going to name names because I don't want to put anybody down. But, you know, you see Kickstarters come out and you see people do their Avengers Assemble call. And then you look at the backer list and it's all the same people every time. Um, and it's a lot of it can be other creators. So you sort of think, well, they back their Kickstarter for a fiver, but then they back their Kickstarter for a fiver, and then their Kickstarter for a fiver, and then their Kickstarter for a fiver, and actually it comes around full circle. Like the same five pound note just goes through a whole bunch of different hands. Does that make sense? Now, I'm not saying this is solely how people's Kickstarters are funded. It's just a trend that I do see somewhat regularly you know there are certain names that are always there um and then if that particular name launches their own kickstarter all of the people they backed tend to show up and i could see that being the case with patreon as well only with patreon and this is something that they don't tell you until you're at the checkout is there is an additional 20 percent um and i can't remember how they they word it but you know, if you're pledging a, a dollar, you're actually pledging a dollar twenty, um, which isn't a, a huge amount. But there's, I believe, they then also take a cut from the creators as well. I could be wrong on that. So essentially, we could be in a position where, you know, if lots of different creators have Patreons and they're all supporting each other, uh, what they're actually doing is, you know, taking a small hit, maybe like you know, ten cents per person they're backing while just giving Patreon money for the, for just facilitating that, you know? Um, so that could be weird. It could just be a merry-go-round of the same cash doing cycles, which would be weird. I certainly think that the Patreons that I'm backing right now are worth backing. Uh, I will have some links in the description down there, or wherever YouTube moves them to, if the layout ever changes again, they could end up over there somewhere for all I know. But I'll link them all down below. I think they're all very good. I think I've had definitely my value for money. I'm definitely, you know, I'm keeping all of them on, put it that way. And, um, yeah, it's something I might try to do myself in the future. But I think before that, I really need to decide on... I don't think, like, my video game hobby and online identity and my comic um, hobby and identity can continue to... I would say coexist. They don't really coexist right now. They sort of just fight for attention and it's never evenly balanced between them. Um, so I think I would have to one day draw the line and decide before doing a Patreon, look, am I about video games or am I about comic books? Um, because I don't think I could be both. Um, and that's going to be interesting. On the subject of the content I put out, by the way, I have, as you've probably noticed, I've switched things around. So usually the camera sits on top of my monitor there, uh, and I talk directly into it. Um, I've moved it around. It's now on one of the shelves, one of the bookcases that you usually see in the background. And I've also moved the microphone arm so that it can also come over here so that you can actually hear me. Otherwise, I would have had my back to the microphone. The microphone's usually... The arm is usually over there between the, uh, the lampshade and the monitor. But moving it around like this, I just felt that it might make it a little more homely and inviting. Sort of like you're coming into... Um, my studio, that's, that's what this is up here, essentially, my art studio, and also where all my retro game consoles are hooked up. Um, and I just thought it might be a little more inviting, a little more personal, a little more one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I also had some comments that with the old setup, it looked like I, I was sitting in a Santa's grotto, um, and everyone was worried that I was going to hit my head all the time on all of the beams and, and sloped roof and everything. So hopefully... It looks a little more spacious like this. It, 
it's just a perspective trick, I think. But let me know what you think if you prefer this setup, and then we can, you know, keep that maybe going forward. Or if you don't like it, we can just switch back to the old one. Um, anyway, I do want to get back to this more regularly. Uh, I want the Monday musings to go back to being weekly and me not taking two months off. Um, and also I'd like to do some other stuff scattered during the week, so let me know what kind of comic content you would like to see. I still want to do reviews of other indie books. What I am very cautious of is, uh, obviously, I put out indie books myself. Uh, a lot of these people are, you know, I consider them to be my friends. Whether the feeling's mutual or not, I don't know. But um, I'd be worried about ever coming across like I know better than them, because I don't. Um, so that's something where I would need to get the balance right, and I think I need to think about that a little bit more before I make a definite decision as to whether I will review other indie comic books on this channel. Um, let me know your thoughts on that as well. Again, I am sorry that it took so long to get a new one out, and I will see you soon. That is a promise.